So on the aft turtle deck here, I'm going to chop this off and I'm going to do it according to plans. Um, although I don't think I'll put the headrest in. So this will be lower and sleeker. Much lower than this. But a little bit lower than some of them that have the headrest up here. Um, so you've got what are called formers. It's a piece of wood that goes across here. Then there'll be another one that comes across here a little bit lower. And then a third one back here. Each one of those has several notches in it. And stringers. Pieces of... Uh, I think it's half by three quarter spruce. Um, we'll run through there. I'm looking down at the plans here. Anyway, so I'm making these things. I'm making uh, just some patterns at a poster board. They give you all the measurements here so you can get this curve just right. I just made half of one here. And I traced it and flipped it on this piece of quarter inch plywood. These are what all the nose pieces, the rib noses, were made out of this quarter inch plywood. So, just trace that, then flipped it over and traced it again. Um, coincidentally, the instrument panel is the same shape. So that's that one. That's the, the first former. It goes right behind your head, right here. Uh, this is the second one. This is the middle one. It's a little bit smaller. And you can see here it indicates where these notches go. And this one as well, you can see the notches so the the plywood or the the spruce strips run back and seat in each of those notches just to provide a surface for the fabric. So I'm making this one now just using these measurements. And I'll use a cup or something to make these little scallops. And then this inner curve is a six inch radius measured two and an eighth inches down from the bottom of this. So just taking my little ruler here and pencil and making that with some poster board. And I'll do it the same as the other one. I'll just make half of it and then trace it out. And then I'll cut those out on the bandsaw, smooth them out with the uh, with the belt sander here, the oscillating belt sander. And that'll be that. So for this one, it's a little more comp well, it's a lot more complicated than the than the first one, but it's got these little scallops. So I've just got this this uh, epoxy fairing filler that you use to thicken up epoxy. Just find something that gives you a little curve to create those scallops. I don't think it's a real critical um, diameter or radius curve that you need. It's just to get the, the wood away from the covering material, the fabric, and the fabric will then just touch on these high spots and that'll be what supports the fabric. So just find something to help you draw a curve there. And I'll cut that on the, out on the bandsaw and smooth these curves over again with the belt sander with the the ends, the round part of the belt sander, throw a drum on there just help smooth those curves out and then I'll measure down from here and there's a radius that'll be drawn in here because this this former is hollow in the middle here, there's no material in the center so here's that middle former and it's, it's ugly, this is ugly, but this doesn't have to be precise. I'll cut inside this line eighth of an inch or so, and outside this one an eighth of an inch, and clean it up on the belt sander, and it'll be just fine. And then I'll have to notch this out. Each one of these has to be notched out like that. Something like that. So I'll do that later on after the fact. I'll just hand fit or uh, what I'll, maybe I'll take a cross section of a stringer just a little piece of one place it on here and trace around it and cut those out and hand fit those to that to that little one or two inch piece of stringer. It shouldn't be too hard. So now I will cut this out on the bandsaw. Piece of cake. Alright so cut these out. 
this was, well, this is the shape of the control panel, but this is cut out for the first former, which goes right behind your head. This is the second former, and there'll be a third smaller one that I cut out. Interestingly, I couldn't find dimensions in the plans on the sheet that has the dimensions to cut these out. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Um, I'm digging through my wood pile. Um, it's the wood kit that I bought ages ago and used for the wings, and there's still pieces of wood that you use for for uh, stringers that the fabric goes over to help shape the fuselage. I got four pieces here. They look like they're about the right length for this. They go right back to the base of the vertical stabilizer, and that's where they should all end up. I only have four of these though. That's weird. Um, I've got three of these, and this is quarter by three quarter. I've got three of these pieces, which are about two feet longer than these. I'm guessing that these are supposed to go on the outside of the fuselage to help shape it. Although three doesn't sound right. Uh, I'm not sure, let's see, looks like two on each side, one on the bottom. So that's five. So I've only got three of these, and I've only got four of these. I need five of these, and I think I need five of these. I've got, well there's some, some wider pieces too, actually there's some bigger pieces. There are, I think they're three-eighths by three-quarter. Maybe those are the ones for the outside of the plane. Uh, so I will have to look at the plans a little more. Maybe I can use these for this, and maybe if the thicker ones are for the outside of the plane. So uh, in any event, I know that the quarter by three quarter is the size that these slots need to be. Just a notch here, notch here, notch here, notch here. So I'll go ahead and since these short ones seem to be just about the perfect length, I won't cut a piece off. I was just going to cut a little piece off that I could use as a template to to trace for these notches, but I'll just hold the end of one of these up there and I won't cut it off. Um, and I had to make the initial cut here and also this initial cut just way outside the line using my saber saw because uh, the throat on my bandsaw isn't deep enough to let all this material swing through. Um, so I just used a saber saw, rough cut that, and then just had smaller pieces that I cut on the bandsaw. And then uh, put the drum on my oscillating belt sander and smooth those out. So now I'll take, take these guys, measure those notches, and just chip away at that material and uh, fit these to it. And I'll need to figure out if I can see if I can get the dimensions for the smaller one, the third one, the, the rear one that goes right in front of the vertical stabilizer and cut that out. So that's where I'm at. I think 
I think this is just there to support this, and I think this is just there because the, the previous guy had a sheet of aluminum that was covering here, and I think this is just where it tied on at the rear. I'll make sure that that's all this is for, and then I'll chop these out. Um, and, well, one thing I'll need to add is some tubes here like this that come out. The seat belt comes back and the two straps hook onto that. And there's a strap that comes here, a strap that comes here to provide uh, strength in this direction. In case you get in a wreck, the seat belt pulls this way. This strap and this strap strengthen uh, this area and help, help support it when it's got that forward force on it. Because uh, a bar like this doesn't have a lot of support if you push on it in, in one of these directions. So, so those straps would be for that. They're half inch, 35 thousandths or something. So I'm going to add that. And then I believe the plans have a, a small tube like what this was that comes down like this and ties in someplace. I don't know if it comes all the way up to this or not. Then there'll be a couple pulleys hanging down from this, a couple pulleys in the bottom. There's, there's a, a gazillion little things to do. Uh, I'll chop this thing off where they had their control rod going through there. Ow. metal here. I'll always try to avoid touching the base metal, the primary structure. So, what I want to do now, let's see here. So I've got this, and I believe the seat belts will come back through this. I want to chop this off, miter these corners, and put a tube across there with a nice miter. This is kind of a hack, having these open tubes there, I don't like that. So, chop this off, and then miter those corners, and then take another tube a little bit longer than this one, miter those corners, and then weld that on. And this will go right here, and this will be the front mounting point for the stringers that go back here. Well, that kind of stinks, but in a way I kind of like it. The smell of cutting, I think maybe it's the, the wheel, and the material of the wheel, when you grind with it, it lets off an odor. Mountain Dew. Nothing like it. Hmm. Uh, just maybe some dross in there from the weld. Alright, so my head will be right here. The seat back will come down right below this. So I'll have to cut it, make it cut out here. The shoulder harnesses will come over my shoulders and go through there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. I've got these marked where the stringers the stringers will slot into those and end right there. Um, 
Oh, and I'm not gonna, I decided I, I won't cut these notches out until later. So the way this will work, I'll weld a tab like this tab. I'll weld a tab here and here, coming up like that. Same on here, same back there. And this wood will sit here and I'll put a screw through there into those tabs or bolt, I'm not sure. And that's what I'll hold these in. Then I'll epoxy the stringers into these notches and it'll form a nice stiff little structure. It just has a support fabric and the airflow will be going straight over it so there won't be much stress on it at all. So I'll notch these and I can do that. I'll do that today probably. But I decided I won't notch this or the rear one until I've got them mounted and can set the stringers into these notches and then I'll fit, I can rough out the notches now, but I'll do the final fitting after they're all mounted here. Just because it's difficult to get all these at the identical angle. The ones here and there and in the, the third and final one. And I don't want the stringers twisting around or have to pound them in there. So I'll cut these to size and then later, once these are all affixed in place, I'll lay the stringers in here and fit them back there just with a just with a chisel. After I've, I'll rough them out ahead of time, but then I'll just fit them with a chisel for the final fit so that they slide in and are all at the, an identical angle to each other. So there's that one. And I, tra I went ahead and just traced out this board on the, basically the rest of my quarter inch, and that's the control panel. I may use that or I may not, I don't know, but I didn't cut it out yet. All right, let's see if this fits. Yeah, it's, it's close. Maybe I'll take a little bit off these ends right there and there, but and maybe eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch just on the end. That's totally fine. That is totally fine. And like I said, I don't think the plans even really give the dimensions for this one, which is weird. It should go. I've got the plans over here. Yeah, I need to study those a little more because, like I said, there's a piece of metal that comes down and it looks like it just comes here and then stops. But I don't think there'll just be a metal piece of metal poking out there. It's probably supported somehow. And this goes right there. So, I think all I'm going to do... Well, obviously I can make this a little bit narrower, like uh, maybe a half inch on each side. And then what I can do is once I notch this, then I can mount this one, and I'll have those metal tabs on here, I fix that, actually it'll be, I guess it'll be metal tabs at the very outside edges, so I'll have to, huh, <laughs> that's funny, I can't put a tab here because that bar's in the way, I can't put a tab here because that bar's in the way. I guess I could have a tab here and then just bend it back and up so I could put it centered on the tube rather than flush with the front of the rear edge. So I fix this in place, get these notched, then I could just put the stringers in place on here and here and wherever they fall I could use that to mark this piece. If the plans I'll look at the plans a little more if they, if I can find a place where it gives the specifications for this. I'll go ahead and, and do that, but I don't see it. Um, and you drill, I think they, the plans I think have a one and a half inch hole in the center right there. And what happens is, there, uh, I think there are two pulleys that hang right here, right in the center they hang down. And the cables come up from below, from under the plane. They come up over the top of the, those two pulleys and go back through this hole and then back to, I think, the, uh, must be the elevator that those cables go to. So, so this will look like this one, just be smaller. Actually, I cut this out of here. So that's, that's perfect, I think. I think this will, yeah, we'll see. But hopefully this is good and I won't throw it away. And this one, you don't 
cut this big arc out of it. It's got the scallops so the material doesn't touch there. I think it's got the scallops. Uh, yeah, the plan, the plan sh shows scallops on it, but then it's just got a hole in the middle for the cables to go through. So that's the plan. Stan. Cool. I like it. Fun seeing teeny little bits come together.